Really hope you're keeping well. It's John here from GPS Training. Welcome to another walk and talk with myself. Walk and talk today is going to be with a Garmin GPS Map 65S. So it's Garmin GPS Map 65S. We'll talk a little bit more about the GPS unit as we get walking. But what walk are we going to do today? We're going to do a long distance trail. It's not a very nice day. Um, it's actually May, believe it or not. Um, I was ahead in the Chibias, but the weather's pretty awful. So I'm going to walk a section of St Oswald's Way. St Oswald's Way is a long distance trail that starts off at Holy Island in Northumberland and ends up at Heavenfield on Hayden's Wall. So I'm going to walk a 19 mile stretch of it from Walkworth. So this is Walkworth Beach we're at. I'm going to head over to Rothby, which is where GPS training is based. So let's have a look at what I did yesterday when I planned my track. I actually imported a GPX file of St Oswald's Way and I've transferred that onto my outdoor GPS. So we're here in Garmin Base Camp, it's the day before, and the easiest way of going to walk a long distance trail is to import what's called a GPS file. A GPS file is when somebody else has planned the route for you. Now I could plan the whole of St Oswald's Way, but it's going to take quite a while to do, but there's lots of resources uh, where people have done this for you. So one of those resources, believe it or not, is the GPS training website. So the GPS training, you may know how what's called the online resource. The online resource is a training platform that you can access 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We have various things on here. So there's things to teach you how to use your GPS unit, how to plan routes on go with base camp, etc. So when you buy a unit from ourselves, you get this free of charge or alternative you can pay £50 a year for the resource. Now, one of the things in the resource that we're going to look at today is the GPX library. So a GPX file is a pre-planned route of a long distance route. Now, don't worry if you can't, if you want to see actually how I'm going to do what I'm going to show you. There's some little videos at the top of how to transfer GPX downloads for Garmin users for both Mac and PC users. And then down the bottom, there is GPX files for other long distance walking trails in England, which is what we're going to do today. So the trail is St. Oswald's Way. So it's a case of just scrolling down, there's all various ones, coast to coast, Cumbria Way, Dales Way. We're just going to scroll all the way down. And it's in alphabetical order. Northumberland Coastal Path. And there we are, Sandstone Way, St Cuthbert's Way, and then St Oswald's Way. So start at Holy Island, finish at Heavenfield, 96 miles in length. And it's just a little link, download St Oswald's Way GPX. And there we are, it's downloaded into our download. So I've downloaded the whole of the trail onto our computer. So what we need to do now is just open up Garmin Basecamp. So here's Garmin Basecamp here. And I've already created a folder on the left-hand side, which is called Long Distance Trail. I've also created a list, which I've called St. Oswald's Way. And you can see here, it says St. Oswald's Way. And then what I do, I literally go to the top, I go to File, Import into St. Oswald's Way. Just need to find the downloads on my computer, which is here. And hopefully, not hopefully, there it is, St. Oswald's Way. And I just import that into Garmin Basecamp. So, it's a track. And there we are, the whole of St. Oswald's Way as a trick. Now it's grey there, it's quite hard to see on the map. If we make it a bright green or something like that, it makes it a little bit easier. So I've got the whole of St. Oswald's Way onto my computer. Now, nice thing is, if I was wanting to walk the whole trail, that'd be absolutely brilliant. But I'm not wanting to walk the whole trail, I'm just going to walk from Walkworth to Rothbury today. So what I need to do is just... Um, um, cut this down into the section that we want. So if I just zoom in on the section I want, so just bring my map into place. So zoom in. And this is Walkworth here, isn't it? Here's Walkworth here. Now what we need to do on this route is we need to just find the waypoint. So just scroll down the waypoints. It's just a guessing game this for me. So again I just need to scroll down and find what will happen is when one is is on the map it will actually turn into an orange well, so I'm just going all the way down. Just totally guessing where they are. And hopefully, I'm going to find a track point. Scrolling down. All the way down. I should find a track point. So you can just see there's one just starting to hip here, here now. So I'm going to the right area. There's my track point there. So I'm getting nearer. Here we are in Walkworth. So I'm actually past it there. You can see my little orange marker. Go in there. Oh past it there so there we are that's where we're going to start the walk we're just on walk with beach car parks once i know where that is 
and I've located it. That's going to be the start of my day walk. I just go down the bottom and you have one that says split at selected point. So split it. So you'll see now on the left hand side, I've got two tracks. I've got set Oswald's way and I've also set Oswald's way 01. So set Oswald's way 01 is a section I'm going to do. So let's just make this stand out a little bit better. Let's make it into bright red it is. So Set us way, zero, one. Now it's going from walk with it, and we need to come over to Rothbury. So the next thing I need to do is zoom in on Rothbury and just cut that at that same point. So I'm just going to bring it in there. And I'm going to do exactly the same to split it into my walk into Rothbury. So it comes along the old railway line there. So I'll find this route here, set us way. And I'm just going to do exactly the same. If just click, click, click until I find my, now it might be a little bit easier than what I did last time because I'm zoomed out a bit. I just need to find the waypoint. This is quite near the end, actually. You can see the little orange dot making its way up. It's Kurt Welpinson area. That's the top of Simon Side Hills. Oh, coming into Rothbury. There we are. We're nearly there. It's just because it's click, click, click until I find it. That's about right. If I want to just check, I can just zoom in on the own survey mapping and make sure exactly because again the more accurate we can get this the more accurate our GPS is going to give us when we're when we're navigating now you'll notice we're actually going to navigate a track this time when all the other walk and talks I've done I've been navigating a route difference with a track and a route is this is going to give me a silent navigation so we're not going to get that audible beep that we've seen on other walk and talks I'm just going to come back a little bit and that is about right that one's there so maybe it's just there okay so i found where i'm going to do exactly the same as I did last time i say split a selected track and there we are so i've got three tracks now i've got this track this track so that's the the red one is the one we're going to walk and this one so just out of i can just i can just delete these other two can't i so that's the one there you are so here's my track for that walk so bring it up easy me this so it's 19 miles 206 points, so 19 miles. I can just rename it, so I put set Oswald's Way Day Walk. Okay, 19 miles, absolutely perfect, isn't it? There it is, named it. Next thing I do is need to send it to my GPS device. So just send to the device, and it's gonna make sure you've got routes, tracks, waypoints. This is the Garmin GPS Map 65S, and it'll send it to my GPS device, and there it is. Now, I just want to check it's on my GPS device, so I just click on my GPS at the top, look at everything that's on it, and there it is, set Oswald's Way, day walk. So we're all ready, we've downloaded a GPX file, we'll cut it into the section of the day's walking that we've wanted, and we've transferred it onto our GPS, and the key thing, we've checked it's on our GPS. So let's get on with the walk. So here we are back at the start of the day's walking. So Garmin GPS map 65S shows our location on it. So we just need to make sure we've got a satellite signal. It's a really nice way to get to the main menu. Just double tap on the on the menu button down the bottom, double tap on it, it takes you to your main menu. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll have one called satellites. It will do. Down the bottom, you've got one called satellite. Just press enter on that, and it shows our satellite strength. So, as our grid reference, we've got six feet accuracy. We do, which just says it's a multi band this unit. We'll talk a little bit more about that as the walk goes on. So, start the day's walking. What do we need to do? So, we need to reset our trip and track data. So, we just go to our page button, we just find our trip computer, and then we need to just press um, menu and reset this menu again on reset enter and reset and we come down to the third one we said clear track and check data okay do you sure you want to do it you just click yes i've already calibrated my compass which is the other key thing i do next thing i do is just load that track just press find select tracks there's a track there so also this way Okay, it's a 19 mile track, it overlays it on the map and we just press go. And our GPS will then navigate. Now we jump onto our compass page. You see we've got a directional arrow pointing in the direction we need to go. It's now saying what time we're gonna get there, time to next waypoint, and we literally just follow that arrow. So some of you may know or may not know 
Uh, this first section that we're going to be walking is actually in the, both the Northumberland Coaster Path and Set Osler's Way. So Set Osler's Way shares the Northumberland Coaster Path just, just south of Walkworth and then that's where we head off inland and head inland following the River Coquits as we head over uh, through Weldon, well, Felton first, then Weldon Bridge and then into Rothbury. Now, I don't know if people listen to the podcast or not, the last time I walked this stretch of footpath was back in October and if people listen say, to the podcast you know in, po- in October I walked the whole of the Northumberland Coastal Path which is 62 miles in 22 and a half hours so this section was about three or four o'clock in the morning if I remember rightly it's a little bit of a blur so excuse me um but it's about three o'clock in the morning and that's when I walked this section in the pitch dark with my head torch on today it's a little bit better isn't it I'm gonna maybe quarter of a mile into my walk that's a bad really. So it's a really nice section, and we're just about to hit the lovely village of Walkwood. This has to be the finest sign in North London, isn't it? Monk's Walk. What else do you want? What a lovely sunny day it is today. So, a little quick overview of the Garmin GPS 65S. There we are, it's off the Garmin Pantera. People have watched my YouTube films before, you know I'm a massive fan of that back pantera that keeps my hands free. And then I can hold my camera with on, I've got my poles and other things. Carrying them while I'm film. So, one of the key features of the GPS Map 65S is it comes from a really long pedigree. Um, people have followed Garmin in the past. No, we've had the 60, the 62, the S. 64s and then it went into the 66s and the key thing when it went into the 66s we ended up with a three inch screen so we went from a 2.6 inch screen to a three inch screen very strangely garmin then brought out a garmin gps map 64sx which was very odd see we've gone to a large screen and then they brought out the 65s now the 65s i can kind of understand why they brought this out because it's a multi-band GPS unit. So, um, key thing with multi-band, it uses five satellite systems. So traditionally, a GPS unit uses the American and the Russian, and sometimes the Galileo, but this also uses the Japanese and the Indian satellite system. So we've got five satellite systems. So you saw at the start, we had accuracy of six foot, which is what, a metre and a half. That's what we're kind of getting out of multi-band GPS system. Other key thing with it is, um, it's multi-band means that it takes two signals off each satellite. It takes two signals off each satellite and it cross-references them. So if there's an inaccuracy or an anomaly, sorry, between those two um, results, if we get that satellite system. So if we're getting a bounce back from a cliff or from a building or something like that, it says, right, okay, the Japanese system is giving me for example, a uh, different odd reading. If it gets that and just runs off the other force, we get hugely, hugely accurate GPS signal. And this is kind of the way forward. The other GPS unit currently on the market, the same as the GPS map 66SR, which again is a three inch version, um, three inch screen version, where this is a 2.6 inch screen. So a 2.6 inch screen, but it's multi-band. Other things with this, it runs off the AA battery. So again, a lot of people do like AA batteries still. So again, in a lot of ultra events and you want long distance walks something like this is actually ideal we've also got the european mapping the topo active mapping built in again what we're seeing on most of the new gps units currently on the market and the other key thing with this it works next to garmin explorer app garmin explorer app is a way we can transfer routes and tracks directly onto our gps unit just using a mobile phone or a tablet and we take the pc or mac out of the equation so it's got all the key features that we're seeing on the modern gps units but again the main thing is um 
2.6 inch screen, slightly smaller than we find on the other one. Now the positive thing about that is improved battery life. So we're gonna get really good battery life. So this GPS framework sits for that long distance walker. We sell loads to people who are doing like the spine race and ultra events and this kind of thing. Who wants a top end GPS unit? Run off double bay batteries so they can change the checkpoints and then um, it's, it's, a, it's hugely accurate and reliable and it's got a really good pedigree behind it. So that's a little bit of overview of the Garmin GPS map, the 65S. Nice field of lambs, they're just out of Felton here. The nice field of lambs. So when we're walking, it's just all we're doing is literally just following the arrow on the screen. So I'm on the map page here, we've got the compass rose at the top. We'll go there. The nice thing about a button GPS unit, the rain can fall on it, nothing will happen. I can wipe the screen clear, get the rain off it, and I can see it nice and clear. So you can either navigate where you're on the map page or alternatively, on the compass page, once again, we've got a big arrow, and then at the top it tells you speed you're walking at, distance to your next track point, estimated time of arrival, and time to next uh, track point. Beautiful old farmland, this actually, just out of the uh, Benick. It's a bit picturesque. We'll just have you heading towards the A1, so you might be able to hear the rumbles of the A1 in the distance. So, come back to our GPS unit. Um, Elevation above sea level, distance so far, speed, maximum speed, moving time, moving average. We're seven miles now, look at moving average. Overall average, 3.6 miles now. Stop time, three minutes, 48. That's shocking, isn't it? So, and yeah, that's all we're just doing. We're just literally either following the arrow, looking at the trip computer. A little bit of elevation, there's not gonna be an awful lot of elevation on this route. Or well, the track, sorry to be correct. Um, and menu and back to that map page with the compass rose at the top. Now, what you can do is you can get rid of the compass rose if you want to at the top. Um, but again, it's quite nice. You can see that and then it overlays on the onion surface. It's just while I go back to just keep wiping the screen because there's a button GPS unit. Nice clear button below. Nice lightweight GPS unit as well. So, nice countryside, easy navigation. So, it stopped raining, hooray! A bit of a breaking rain, I thought I'd just show you the basic navigation of the, uh, the Garmin GPS Map 65S. Once you get head around it, it's really, really nice, easy GPS unit to use. Very much similar than any other GPS Map uh, series GPS unit that Garmin produced. So, we just have the page button down here. We press the page button and you see across the middle, it kind of comes up with the various pages. Whatever page you want to stop on, so the trip computer, just stop on there and it ends up on the stop on that computer. If you want to go the opposite way, you press the quit button, you can do the same there. So whichever one you want, I want to go to my elevation, just stop on the elevation and it ends up on my elevation. So you literally just do that. There's the trip computer, so we've done 14.6 miles. We're not doing any speed now. Stop time 12 minutes. You can see that's counting up because so we've stopped. Moving average 3.5 and overall average 3.3 miles an hour. So that's the basic navigation around it. Now, if you want to go to your, me your main menu, you can either go through the page button to do that, or alternatively, just double press the um, just press just double press the menu button. And it takes you to your main menu. So that's a bit of a shortcut of how you get to the main menu. Main menu is the way we're going to say waypoint manager. We'll look at some of these. Any track manager will look at the end of the walk. How we share things wirelessly. Have the ability to share things wirelessly etc um so got waypoint averaging that's really quite a, a nice feature of making very accurate waypoints so again if you want to mark trees or you want to mark gravestones or something like that it's a way you can set your gps up and it gets a, uh, a really key fix of exactly where you are it also produces the raw data i don't know the technical side of this but it produces raw data this so same as same as a raw on a camera so it's not just gpx files you can download the the raw data the interview with garmin about it i can't remember exactly how they they phrased it so you've got the basic information there sun uh, sun and rise so 
you got that the, the thing there so it's really nice and easy to find how we find our waypoints and our routes marks how we mark a waypoint quit of course quit enter menu is the menu of each of these so again we go to any of these pages so again if we're on the if we're on the uh, that the um, trip computer page press menu it gives you the options of the settings on that which is how we reset it at the start now going back to what we're doing which is walking a long distance trail walking a long distance trail just think how it, how key this data is so again it says we're going to get to the end at 1737 that's because we're stopped at this moment in time but again if you're walking a long distance trail as we did that video yesterday i downloaded a whole of the gpx file and i then cut it into day by day sections just think how useful this information is so your accommodation you can only get in from half past three well your gps says you're gonna get there at two o'clock you can then stop have a leslie lunch explore some of the sites en route or alternatively your gps says you need there at eight o'clock your accommodation rings up at six o'clock worried where are you oh we're gonna be there at eight o'clock the gps gives you that live information doesn't it so this thing when you do a long distance trail as i'm doing today how in how key that will be again when we start walking that will give us a little bit more accurate data but if you've seen any of my other videos key thing is what we do we're just following this arrow all the time following the arrow either on the compass page or alternatively on the on the map page i put that compass rose at the top um, and then you can just either follow that and you can do there. Now you can see this track is fairly accurate, but again, you can see the Odin and Serbian map underneath is a little bit off there. Just be aware, arrow might be pointing a little bit off. Again, if, if it's not 100% accurate track um, in this, as it is in this case, you know, just look at the arrow and understand why it's pointing off the left hand side. If I follow this path here, it'd be pointing off to the left because actually the track is off to the left, even though the right of where you see where our thumb is, is actually going to be a little bit off to the right. Before I finish, I'll discuss the difference between routes and tracks and what the benefits and downsides of each of them. But hey, I hope that's giving you a bit of an oversight of the base navigation around it. Um, again, so I'll quickly show the power button, press the power button lightly on the side, power button light on the other side. This is how you adjust your backlight, time of day, got 50% battery life and full battery as well. So that's the way we can just check our battery life by just pressing the power button lightly on the side. It brings up that page, which again, we can alter the backlight if we want to, time of day, satellite signal, an auto battery level. I've just got some energizing today, so I'm quite interested to see how long I've been walking for. I've used 50% of battery life, which is uh, so how, how long have we been out for? Check computer, um, moving average, yeah. So I suppose we used 50% in four, so we have four and a half hours, haven't we? So um, yeah, it's gonna get what, nine hours of battery life? Just some energizers in there. I know if you're watching the videos, I'm a big fan of Ender Loops. I'd expect to get a little bit more from that. But again, if you're getting nine hours of battery life, Garmin do say 15 hours of battery life. But again, if you if you listen to everything Garmin say, you're not going to go very far in this one. <laughs> I don't know how you get 15 hours of battery life. Maybe if you use battery save option and other such things. Um, I always say a good eight to 10 hours out of a good set of batteries, which is what these are going to come in at nine hours. Again, if we get some good and a loop, um, some top end batteries, you're gonna get 10 plus 11 hours out of it. You're gonna be really struggling to get 15 hours of battery life out of it. So I hope that kind of helps a little bit up the hill. Do you realize why I stopped here? Because there's a little bit of a climb. So we'll just climb up here um, and then we're gonna jump on. Um, a little bit, I think we've got another two or three miles of a jump on the Rothko Ranch line and then drop down um, the old Rothko Ranch line, I would say, the railway line. And it's just downwards and back into Rothbury. So it's, uh, yeah, it's starting to rain again, but hey, it's May in Rothbury. Right, a little bit of self indulgence here. I've just stopped here. Look behind me, is there's a post and a house there. So hopefully, if we can find the photo, I'm going to put on now on the video a picture of me in my younger days here. So many years ago, I walked uh, along St. Oswald's Way with Claire Balding for Ramblings on Radio 4. And there's a picture taken of us here with this building in the background. My claim to fame is, <laughs> a bit moronic this, I think I was the only person, the first person ever to be on Ramblings on Radio 4 twice. Because Ramblings is supposed to be your all-time favourite walk in Northumberland. Uh, and mine was Hob or Crags. So I was on Ramblings many, many years ago on Hob or Crags with my other business, which is Shepherd's Walks, which is what I had uh, well, it's still our parent company on GPS training. And then um, I worked very closely with a guy called Jonathan Manning, who's the editor of Country Walk magazine at the time, because uh, uh, BBC wanted to do a, a, a long distance trail as, as a full series on Ramblings. So I helped him put the pitch together for Set Oswald's Way, and it won the pitch. So, so Set Oswald's Way was a full series on Ramblings on Radio 4. And um, soon I did all that work to help uh, Jonathan Manning um, put that together. 
uh, they kindly asked me to walk Claire on this section of St Oswald's Way, um, which was my home section. I did from Weldon Bridge to Rothby. I know that's just six miles and I've done what, 19 miles, it's a little bit longer. I did a six mile section from Weldon Bridge to Rothby, which was me walking home. Um, and uh, yeah, I did that with Claire and a little crew. Um, I maybe put a link in the bottom if anybody's interested in listening to it. I think it still must be on the iPlayer somewhere. So I'm gonna put a picture. You see me in my younger days, a little bit slimmer, <laughs> a little bit fitter than what I am now. Uh, yeah, but that's uh, that's the picture there of me with Claire um, on Rambling. So yeah, just kind of a uh, just shows really the old shepherd huts and things. You no, know, this is what we used to have, didn't we? You know, before uh, the urbanisation, before we, before we all moved into the, the towns and the, the villages and whatever. Well, that would have been a shepherd's hut with a bit of a, a pen next door to um, to keep his uh, sheep in there. Um, completely no road access in the middle of nowhere. So, yeah, it's an uh, yeah, interesting story, and hopefully, it's going to be my younger days. Let's uh, drop down here, and then we're going to be at Popper Hoff, which is an interesting place. So, just heading back into Rothby. If people have been on a walk and talk with me before, I did a walk and talk with Sat Back to 20. It was a lovely sunny day, I remember rightly. And I walked up the old Rothby branch line out of Rothby. Now I'm walking back into it. So, this is the old railway line that used to come into Rothby, and that came from Scotts Gap. So, the junction was Scotts Gap, and it came down and it just, uh, just above where the livestock market was. It was. But I thought I'd take this opportunity to swear out the wind and the weather a bit kinder to us to discuss routes and tracks. So, I think we picked up. When I planned the route in, on the, in, in the office yesterday, I downloaded a track. Now, have you seen any of the work I've done on YouTube and uh, any of the walk and talks? I've always created a route. So what's the difference between a route and a track is what you're all gonna be asking. The key thing is a route on a Garmin GPS unit is limited to 250 waypoints if we're using direct routing, which is a straight line from waypoint to waypoint, or 50 if we're using what's called a turn by turn routing, which I've not looked at yet on any of the videos I've done on, on YouTube. So again, maybe come to that later. So we'll say 250 waypoints is the maximum number of waypoints we can have in a route. Now, a track traditionally is a breadcrumb trail of where we've been walking can have up to 20,000 track points in it. So you might say, well, actually, we might as well just use a track all the time. But the key thing with a track, the navigation experience is completely different. You've mostly noticed, Dave, you've, when you've been watching me, is my GPS doesn't beep. If you've been watching any other videos I've been doing, when I'm out walking a route, as I hit a waypoint, I get an audible beep on my GPS, I can pick it up and turn left and turn right. Where a track is a silent navigation. This is because a track really should have been made by be recording where I've been walking and there should be a track point every few seconds. So my GPS will be beeping at me all the time. So that's traditionally why it's done. Now, when you're downloading routes from the internet, what we call GPX files, the sometimes there'll be routes if the day walks, but most times when you're downloading a long distance route, there will be a track. And the only reason that there'll be a track is, a, a, let's say we're walking to Oswald's Way now, a 97 mile long distance trail, there's no way we can have 97 miles with 250 waypoints. It just wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. So therefore, when you download GPX files of full long distance trails, we'll tend to do them as a track or people will tend to do them as a track. Now, this is a really common mistake. People don't know what they're downloading. And actually, I can take you an instance. And uh, it must be changed, but let's go to the National Trail website. Download the GPX file for the Havens Wall off the National Trail website. It's a route with something like 10,000 waypoints. It does not work in a GPS unit. So when we're downloading routes from the internet, we need to understand what we're downloading. We need the skills to be able to adapt and change those routes or tracks according to our route, as I showed you yesterday, you know, cutting down to day by day sections. So you need those skills and understanding what you're downloading. So going back to the original question, what's the difference between route and track? Route 250 waypoints or via points would be correct. A track 20,000 track points. The navigation experience on your GPS is a, a route will give you an audible beep as you hit a waypoint and a track is a silent navigation. 
So the choice is yours. There's not one right or one wrong. The choice is yours. But please, 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 if you are creating routes, think about this 250 waypoints. There's so many routes online where somebody with the kindest of heart has sat there thinking, do you know what I'm going to do on a lovely wet Saturday day like today? I'm going to plan the coast to coast for everybody to download off the internet and sit there with their memory map software or their ordnance survey subscription, clicking out every time there's a corner and create these ridiculous routes that frankly don't work. What will happen is when you hit the 251st waypoint, it will stop working. Your GPS will just go, I'm not navigating anymore. And you're going to look like a fool. So think about that when we're downloading routes from the internet. Again, we do webinars on GPX file downloads, the online resource. We looked a little bit at the online resource yesterday. There's videos taking you through there in the online resource. Or even better, why you come on our training course we have around the country. So routes and tracks that hopefully uh, uh, classifies what each of those are for you. And uh, I can just carry on and enjoy my last bit of a downhill stretch into Rothbury. And I'll do a little summary about how I save my track and when I hit it. So hope this has helped a little bit understanding routes and tracks. So we're just approaching the end of the walk. You can see it's 52, 51. It's been a bit long, 48. This is actually where St. Oswald's Way goes up. You can see the sign. It goes up that hill there now as it heads over to uh, Harwood Forest. But we're just coming down to the end of that track. Must be a little later. 32, 15, 56 it is. Let's count it down. And it's now zooming round there to the left. The track must be a little bit off there. So we go, it's what often happens if your arrow points around to the right, that means your last track point is just a little bit off to our right, which it is. Can you see there? See, it's just there on the screen. So you can see it's just a little bit off there to the right, isn't it? And that's the reason why the arrow points are there. So, what do we need to do at the end of the day's walking? So we need to first stop navigating that track. So we just press the find button again. And we just come down and press stop navigation. And that will then uh, stop that. Press enter, sorry, and stop, enter and stop navigation. Next thing we do, save that track. So we just go to our main menu. I hope you remember, we're double pressing the menu button. It takes to the main menu. And we come down to track manager. Press enter on track manager. Press enter on current track. And then we just save the track. By default, it gives the name and the time. I was saving it and we just go all the way down to the bottom. So done is highlighted and pressed done. Okay, it's exporting the track and therefore it's being saved. It says clear the current track associated with it. We just select yes. All right, and that's the track saved. So there's the track there saved, 1557 and 16 seconds. That's us, at the end of the day's walking, we need to stop that navigation, stop navigating the track at all, and, and then also save the track that we've just created. So I very much hope you enjoy the latest walking talk from myself, John from GPS Trainers. I did my 19 mile walk from Walkworth all the way to Rothley along St. Oswald's Way. Slightly different this time, because we're downloading that GPX file and navigating where we edit it and then navigate the GPX file as we were doing, as we would do if we were walking along the distance trail. Um, I very much hope you can join me on one of my uh, courses either online webinar courses or one of our physical course that we do nationwide we do them all the way from the new forest south downs up to peebles in scotland and everywhere in between so just go to our website which is gpstraining.co.uk 
and book onto one of our courses or onto one of our webinars. If you're interested in buying an outdoor GPS unit, please do get in touch with ourselves and uh, we can guide you and hopefully help you to choose the right GPS for your requirements. And if there's anything else you'd like me to cover in future walk and talks, please just leave a note in the comment box below and I'll try and um, uh, react to that. Again, if there's a unit you want me to do, I think we're gonna do some watches as well. So we'll do some watches. So if there's anything you want us to cover in future walking talks, please do put in the comment box below. But the most important thing is get out walking, get using your GPS units and start enjoying the countryside. And I very much hope you can join me again in a future walking talk.